What is up guys and welcome to a new VR tutorial in Unity. Now in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make from scratch this really cool menu that follow our hand using the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit. And we will make this without ever writing a single line of code. So I hope that you guys are ready. Make sure to support my work by liking and subscribing this video down below. And for the one who want to go even further, you can join us on Patreon to get access to exclusive tutorial and the source code of all of my project. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so for this project, we'll need Unity XR Interaction Toolkit 2.3. Now, at the time I'm making this video, this version is in pre-release, so to download it, make sure to go to Windows, Package Manager, click on this little setting icon, Advanced Project Settings, and here, Enable Pre-Release Package, and then if we close this window and search for XR Interaction Toolkit, and you should be able to see a other version here button where you can download this 2.3 version of the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to create a UI. For this, let's right click in the hierarchy, UI, Canvas, and we can rename it Hand Menu Canvas. Now we can add anything we want on this canvas and let's start by right clicking on it. Go to UI, Panel, and if we double click on this panel game object, as you can see, it is a giant object in our scene, but we will fix that later. We can, for now, change the color of the panel. Let's turn it black, for example, and even make it more opaque by increasing the alpha on the color. Perfect. Now, just to test, I'm going to add a button by right clicking on the panel. Go to UI, Button Text Mesh Pro, here, little tips, you can press on the T key to edit the shape of the button and press on W to move it around to where you want. Next, again, just for testing, let's right click on the panel, but this time add a scroll bar. We can, as of before, edit its size as well. And just like that, we have made a very simple UI canvas created in just a few clicks. But now this UI is shown on the screen, but is not part of our world which is what we want in VR. So to fix this, we need to go to the canvas component on the hand menu canvas and set the render mode from overlay to world space. There you go. Now what's left is to scale down the canvas to 0.001 on all axes. Okay, finally, we can reset its position to 000. And if we double click on this canvas, as you can see, it is now placed at the center of our world and we can place it around like we would with any 3D object by moving and rotating it. Perfect, now the next step is to make this menu follow our hand to turn it into a hand menu. Now, in my case, I want the menu to appear on the top of the end when the pill is facing to the head. So instead of having to deal with weird rotation of the menu, what we can do is to actually select the left end, not the left end model, by the way, and move it to the side. We can press on E and rotate it on the Z axis to the UI appearing position. And then simply select our canvas and place it next to the hand Oh, and of course, this is a menu UI, so don't hesitate to scale it to something smaller that better fit the hand size. Now, after tweaking the position and rotation, you should have something like this. Of course, feel free to place the UI anywhere that you prefer, on top or below of the end. But once you are happy, you can select the hand menu, canvas, and drag it as a child of this left hand. Now, it's nice to know that you don't have to reset the position of the hand because by default, it will follow the position that we have for our left controller when we click on play. So it does not really matter where it's placed right now. And just like this, we have set up a small UI to follow our left hand. But of course, the best thing is to be able to interact with the UI. And for this, we can actually select the end menu canvas and add as a new component, a track device graphic ray caster. There you go. Now also, if we go to Event System, that must have been added when creating the canvas, by the way, we can replace here the Input System by XR UI Input Module. And if you don't want to autofill all the input action down here, we can click on the little preset icon and select the preset that we should have here. Okay, so here you go. We can at this point interact with two ways on this UI, either with a ray or by poking it. 
But as this UI is near us, I think the best way is to simply poke with the index finger. Now, I've previously talked about the poke interactor in my previous tutorial, so if you want to know more about it, go watch the two videos that should appear on the screen right now, but it's really simple to set up. We simply need to select both the hands, create an empty game object, rename the first one left hand poke, rename the right one right hand poke, select both these empty game objects again and add a new component called XR poke interactor. Now we need to make sure that poke will follow the position of the tip of the finger and model. So for the left hand, I'm going to click on this little icon next to attach transform, search L index and select the L index ignore. And this is the bone that is placed at the end of the left hand, which will be perfect for the poke to be. And now I'll do the same with the right hand. So let's search for this time right index in your and there you go. Now, if we select this transform for the right poke, the setup is basically done. Just here, make sure that interaction with UI is enabled and again, I went a bit quicker here because I've covered this in a previous tutorial, so go watch it if you have any issue to follow this right now. But now, let's click on play to see if we can interact with our little hand menu. And there you go, as you can see, we can now see our little hand menu following our left hand, and we can even interact with it simply by poking it with our right hand, that's awesome. But there is just one annoying thing with this end menu at this point, and it is that it never disappears. And this can be really bad for the player when it just wants to interact with the other object in the scene. So next, I'm going to show you how to use both the gaze and affordance system to make this UI show or disappear. Okay, so what I want to do is to show this end UI when the palm is pointing in the direction of our head. And for this, I'm going to use another feature from the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit, the Gaze Interactor. So first, I'm going to right-click on the Hand Menu Canvas, Create Empty Parent. This will create, as the name suggests, a parent for this menu that we can simply rename Hand Menu. Now, I'm going to right-click on this parent and create an empty game object that we can call Gaze Interactor. Next, let's click on Add Component and search for Gaze Interactor. There you go. Now the ray will take the direction of the blue axis here. So what we can do is select our hand menu canvas, right click the transform, copy rotation, select back our Gaze Interactor and pass it the rotation of the menu. Then we can simply rotate it 180 degrees to make sure that the blue axis of the Gaze Interactor point toward us. And we can even move the interactor near our wrist, if you'd like. This will make the show and disappear thing more precise. Oh, and because we don't want this ray to be annoyed by our hand menu, let's here uncheck the enable interaction with UI on the gaze interactor. There you go. Now we need to create an interactable on our head that the gaze interactor will be able to find. So let's select our main camera, right click, 3D object, sphere, we can scale the sphere down to 0.3 on all axes. And in my case, and I only want the collider, so let's remove the mesh filter and the mesh renderer. And finally, let's add a XR simple interactable. Oh, and something that I just forgot is that if you want the XR simple interactable to be triggered by the gaze interaction, you need to go here to gaze configuration, allow gaze interaction, and set it to yes. And there you go. Now we will be able to know if the gaze interactor is pointing to our head or not. So just to test this, let's go to the interactable events and in the over and third, I'm going to click on the plus button to create a new event, drag the hand menu canvas over there, then go to game object, selective, and set it to true for the over and third. Now we can do the same, but set it to false on the over exited. Perfect, now let's click on play to find out if this works. And there you go, as you can see it works. When I point the top of my hand in the direction of the player, the menu appears and when I get it away, it correctly disables the UI. But as you can see, the direction window in which the UI appears is a bit short. So to fix this, let's leave play mode. 
you can actually increase the size here of the sphere interactable. So for example, you can select the sphere and instead of 0 0.3 for its size, you can set it to 0 0.6 on all axes. Of course, the bigger the sphere, the easier it will be for the gaze interactor to find it and to then enable here the end UI. And now if I click on play, well, you might not just feel it by watching this video, but it's way better. The UI show or hide more naturally. And there you go. Now we can easily hide the UI. But now there is another problem that might happen is that other interactor can trigger this. For example, if you have a direct interactor that you can use to grab an object, if you put your hand in your head, it might make the UI show. So for this, we can actually go to our gaze interactor. Next, go to Interaction Layer Mask, Add Layer, call it Hand UI Ray, go back to the Interactor and set the Interaction Layer Mask to None, then only to our new Hand UI Ray. There you go. Now, what's left is to go to our sphere under the main camera and set the Interaction Layer Mask as well to Nothing, then to only Hand UI Ray. There you go. Now, everything is safe. And we have succeeded to make a really cool hand UI that we can poke and show when we want. But because we've used the interaction system from Unity, there is one more thing that we can do to improve the feel of this UI. And it's to use the new affordance system to fill in or out the canvas instead or disable it. So just as a little bonus, let me show you how to do it. First, let's go to our sphere, XR Simple Interactable, and remove both the over event that we made previously. There you go. Now, if we go to our end menu canvas and click on add component, canvas group, as you can see, with this component, we can actually use the alpha parameter here to control the alpha value of all the element in our canvas at the same time. That's pretty cool. So let's go back to the interactable and now change this value with the affordance system. So first, let's click on add component, add a new XR interactable affordance state provider. For the interactable variable, we can drag the interactable of our sphere over there. And now let's ignore the select and activate event to only use the over event. Finally, let's click on add component again and search for float affordance receiver. We can drag the XR interactable affordance state provider component in the first parameter of this component. And for the affordance theme data, let's right click in the project window, create affordance theme, float affordance theme, and call it hand menu affordance. And finally, this is where we can set the alpha of our canvas that we want when we interact with our UI. So in our case, we simply want to set it to one when we over. So in overt animation state start, let's write one here. And there you go. Now everything is basically done. What's left is to select our sphere interactable and drag there or hand menu affordance. Okay, right now, the one thing that is missing is to use this change of parameters on our canvas by clicking on the plus button on this component right there, drag our hand menu canvas, go to canvas group and here select alpha at the top. And there you go, congratulations, this should do the trick. Of course, you can even set the duration of the transition over here on this component, but in my case, I will leave it like this. But now, the moment of truth, let's click on play to find out if this worked. Oh, this is looking great, I love it. And there you go, guys, a beautiful and menu UI that is not too intrusive and is super useful for the player. So this tutorial was super fun to make and I hope that you enjoyed following along. If you did, please leave a like down below and don't forget to subscribe to not miss the next video. Now all of my content is made possible by the awesome people on Patreon. So if like them, you want to be part of this community and get access to the source code of this project, join us, link in the description. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.